everyone. Um, my name is Dan, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I I recently joined the uh, the company behind Astro, um, but I could not have introduced it any better. So instead, I'm going to talk about one of the frameworks you can use with Astro. So. Solid is a front-end framework. It sort of fits in the stack where React is, where it's great for single-page applications, um, but you can also use it with meta frameworks like Astro or with like our version of Remix, which is called Solid Start. And yeah, I want to introduce it today. And this is the Lightning version, so uh, <laughs> so we only have uh, a few minutes to do so. Um, but you might get a sense for why I think Solid is appropriate for a React conference. They look a lot alike. They both use function components. They both use JSX. The only difference you can spot in this simple example is that Solid's uh, version of useState called createSignal returns a getter rather than a value. So they look a lot alike, but behind the scenes, they're really quite different. There's no virtual DOM in Solid. Um, it doesn't rerun this component function ever, and instead it updates exactly what it needs using what we call fine-grained reactivity. So to explain what reactivity is, I actually want to go back a bit to vanilla JavaScript. Let's say I have a header and an input box, and I want to update the header with the name when the user types something in. Well, it's simple enough. I can add an event listener that will listen and update the text content. Um, but things get a little bit trickier if I had a last name input, because now when I'm typing in the last name, I have to remember what the user typed in for the first name in order to update the header appropriately. Um, so I might have some intermediate variables and then uh, update those intermediate variables in the event listener and then use those when I'm updating the text content. And then because I don't want to repeat myself, um, I can pull that out into its own function. And you're a React developer. You don't write UI code like this. Um, but I think it demonstrates some of the elements, the basic elements of building an interactive user interface. You've got some data the user can change. In this case, it's the, the first name and the last name. You've got data that's derived from that data, like the greeting. And then you have some sort of output, some sort of effect that you want to synchronize with the data. Um, and Solid is really based directly on these three ideas. We call them signals, derivations, and effects. And I want to build up these ideas from the ground up. It starts independent of any rendering. Let's say I just have a variable and I want to console log it out. I can change the variable as much as I want, but nothing is going to happen unless I log it again. So solid gives us create signal, which we can call to replace our variable. We can give it an initial value. And like I mentioned before, that first value we get back is a getter. The second is a setter. And create signal is what we call a primitive, because it's one of the basic building blocks of reactivity in solid. This didn't change anything on its own, but the power comes when combined with effects. Like use effect in React, create effect takes a function. So let's move our console log inside that function. What will happen is the effect will run a first time. It'll print out my name. And it will see that the name signal was called along the way. Then the effect will subscribe to that signal so that any time I change it, the effect will run again. I can create a, another signal uh, for the last name, and I can use that within the effect. And this time, it will subscribe to both signals. So whether I change the first name or the last name, the effect will rerun. And I can pull out this greeting into its own function. And because it's being called within the scope of create effect, Solid still knows to subscribe to these signals. And all of this happens at runtime. There's no dependency array with the effect. Um, a lot of people look at Solid and they 
say, oh, I heard Solid has a compiler. Maybe it's like Svelte, um, which is another front-end framework that heavily uses a compiler for this kind of thing. But everything I've shown here works at runtime just using JavaScript scope. So let's peel back the curtain a little bit and show some pseudocode as to how this sort of works behind the scenes. At its core, create signal takes that initial value and lets us read and write to it. But in order for any reactivity to work, it has to keep track of effects that subscribe to it. So to do this, we'll have a context stack that will just maintain any effects that are currently running. We can have this helper function that just returns the top of that stack. And then in create effect, we take in that function that was passed and we create a wrapper around the function. The wrapper pushes itself onto this context stack, then it runs the function, and when the function is done, it removes itself from the context stack. So what that means is while we're in create effect, the effect is on the context stack to be noticed. So when we read from a signal inside an effect, the signal can call this helper function, see the effect that it's running inside, and add it to the subscriber list. Then when we write to the signal, it can go and loop through all of those subscribers and call them again. So this is definitely like a simplified implementation of what Solid does behind the scenes, but I really wanted to show how this reactivity can work all at runtime, no dependency arrays with automatic tracking and no compiler. Once we have our signals and effects, we can use those to update anything. Let's say I have a header and I add that to the DOM and nothing shows up right now, but if I change the effect to change the text content of the header, well, now like before, if I change the signals, it will run the effect, but this time it'll update the DOM node. We're getting a little bit more realistic, but we still don't want to be manually creating DOM elements. And that's where Solid's version of JSX comes in. We can replace this line with some JSX, and it works exactly the same way. That's because Solid's JSX works a little bit different than React's. In React, when I make a JSX element, it gives me this react.create element output, which doesn't look so easy to read, but it really only makes sense within the context of a React render function. But when I use JSX in Solid, it just compiles directly to a DOM node. And that's why I was able to just append it to the DOM. And it's also why it's a lot easier to work with Solid with vanilla JavaScript libraries like CodeMirror or Greensock or D3. But that's not all the JSX compiler can do for us. We can use this greeting directly inside the JSX instead of creating an effect ourselves. And what this does behind the scenes is Solid will create an effect that will manually update that part of the DOM when the greeting changes. So I can go ahead and add some inputs here so the user can change the signal. I can use JSX to um, create the initial values. And now that we're changing things from within JSX, I don't really need these variable names anymore. I don't need those references. So why don't I create them along the way using a wrapping div? And you know what? I want my code to be reusable. I want to encapsulate it so it's not floating around in the global scope. I'll stick it in a function and call it. And this is how, function, this is how components work in Solid. They're just functions that group your code and let you reuse it. Solid also, also ships with this render function that makes it easier to add your component to the DOM and also clean up those subscriptions later on. Once we have this component, um, I can go ahead and you know, create two of them in this app. And each instance has its own state. Um, so I can sort of change this one if I want. Um, but the thing about Solid's primitives versus React's hooks is they're not necessarily bound to the component. If I move the signals outside of the component, now they both refer to the same state. Cool. <laughs> So 
React and Solid look a lot alike, but they're very different in terms of their mental model. In React, we have what I like to call opt-out re-rendering. Components own those state primitives, so whenever you change state in React, it will always rerun your, your component, and then you can opt out of certain things re-rendering with use callback and use memo and use effect with all of those dependencies. In solid, nothing's gonna happen if you just create state. But when you use your state in your JSX, or when you explicitly use create effect, solid will create those fine-grained subscriptions to only update what is necessary. And this is faster, and it is smaller, and that's what brought Solid its initial popularity. But to me, it's also just easier to reason about. It's easier to think about. So I hope this demo um, encourages you to try out Solid for yourself. Um, we have this website here, um, this advanced intro video I made, so go check that out. <laughs> um, we uh, just launched the beta for Solid Start, which if you like Remix, Check out Solid Start, they're very similar. Um, and um, if for some reason you want more of me, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, thanks, everyone. Woo!